Hello there, I'm on holiday next week, so I've just been checking out my Anything to Anything adapter and the new power charger I've got. Quite good, Type-C, lots of power, a couple of Type-As as well, should be really useful. Anyway, if you're coming back to the channel, welcome back, really good to see you as ever, hope you're enjoying it. If you're new to the channel, then really good to see you, I love to make new friends. Look around the videos, see what you like, like them, share them, subscribe to them, that'd be fantastic. Today, we're going to be looking at Google Gemini, Google's new AI adapter for Android phones. So let's get started. OK, well, let's get started on Gemini. A lot of people say to me, well, isn't Gemini just uh, Google Assistant rebranded? Well, no, it does a lot of the same things as Google Assistant, but because you're using artificial intelligence, it does things a lot better. It's much like having a conversation with somebody. Bit like when we were doing co-pilot video a few weeks ago. Well, let's get started. Now, I've got it on my phone here, which I've got connected onto my screen, so I can record the screen so you can see the video and what I'm doing. So I'll be glancing down every so often to drive the computer, so uh, forgive me if I'm not uh, looking at you enough of the time. OK, well, let's get started. So we'll open up the phone, go to Gemini, and here we are. You see, you can remember some recent things, got some suggestions at the top. Now, we can interact by typing or by voice, and we can take photographs as well. I'll look at the photographs a bit later. So, let's get started. Tap the microphone button. Tell me about the weather tomorrow. The weather forecast for tomorrow is... Actually, hold on, let me start again. In Oxford, it'll be mostly cloudy, with a high of 16 and a low of mm. 6. So it really is like uh, talking to somebody, isn't it? Because they've got that one slightly wrong. OK, let's see what we're going to do tomorrow. Okay. Show me gliding sites near Banbury. Here we I go. found the following gliding sites near Banbury. Banbury Gliding Club. It is located at Hinton in the Hedges Airfield, Northants, NNN, 13.5 NSUK. And you can see there's a map down below as well. How about Northampton? There are several gliding sites near Northampton, Welland Gliding Club. It is located... There you go. So you can see how we can develop the conversation by just uh, making corrections or alterations as necessary. And it was showing us on a map as well. But let's see what we can do about getting advice. Uh, Check and dances on the television right now as I record this, so let's try that. What do I need to take to a ballroom dancing lesson? Here's a list of essentials you'll want to bring to your ballroom dancing lesson. Comfortable clothing. Mm -hmm. Opt for clothing that allows Fair you enough. to move freely. Stretchy fabrics like leggings or fitted pants and a comfortable top are good choices. Appropriate footwear. Very important. Ballroom dancing shoes are designed with smooth soles to glide on the dance floor. If you don't have them, comfortable flat shoes mm. with clean soles will do. Yeah, don't want sticky shoes. Staying hydrated is important, especially during physical activity. That's hair easy. accessories. If your hair is long, Maybe I won't consider need those. using hair ties or clips to keep it out of your face. A positive attitude. Ballroom dancing is a... Well, that's where we're getting a little bit on into the distance, I think, but we'll see how it is. So let's try something else. Let's, I'm going hard, as I mentioned, so let's try that. How long will it take to drive to Car Park 2 in Birmingham Airport? Head southeast on Yefley hmm. Drive. That went down a slightly different route than I wasn't expecting, but uh, it seems to be doing the right thing. So let's get back to Google Gemini. Got a bit confused there, so but we knew we knew where it was. Okay, now I said we can also use photographs, so let's try doing that. Let's say take a photograph of this. We add it to a conversation, and we go, "What is this?" That looks like a blower brush. It's a common tool used to gently remove dust and debris from delicate surfaces like camera lenses electronic equipment, or even vinyl records. The brush on one end and the bulb on the other allow you to blow away particles with... Well, that's pretty good and lots of information. I use Google Lens a lot for identifying things, but I just does a, a search on the web and comes back with a few suggestions of images. This Gemini is telling me an awful lot about the whole thing, so maybe I should start using it when I'm trying to identify plants, which I do not know any of them. Uh, should do something more advanced, but you've got the idea of how it works. Okay, we can also control any app on the phone. So let's try this. Mute audio. Got it. 
Okay, that sounds good. So it should be shut up for a moment. Now there's, a, there's an app for the files file manager. So let's try open files. Yep, fair enough. Open that little app. Let's go back here. Unmute audio. I'll do it. That's good. And one more. Open Google Play. So, pretty useful. You can get to anything by through Gemini. It's really handy if you're not sure where to go through various menus. I'm going to talk about routines now, and that involves going through several menus in Google and Gemini. So let's try it. To get that, you press your icon for you, go down to settings. No, you don't. I need to go back to... If we go back to Gemini, would help, wouldn't it? Here we go. Press that, go to settings, go down to Google Assistant Features in Gemini, scroll to the bottom, and you get routines. Okay. Which basically sets up a series of actions to be done which triggered by something. Okay. If we look at bedtime, for example, when I say bedtime or good night, it will ask me what time I want the alarm set for in the morning, tell me if my phone battery is low so I know if I need to charge it or not, and finally it will play some sleep sounds, whatever they are. But you can see there's a routine there and it's actually activated. Let's try adding a routine. Okay, so I press new. I'm going to use a personal routine, I think, so it's only for me. Now I'm going to call it Get Up. Okay, take that. Now, how's it going to start? Uh, I'm not actually that good at getting up, uh, getting up, but let's try Get Up at Sunrise on. Monday to Friday, so we turn Saturday and Sunday off. Okay, so select the location, which will be where we are, and we add that as the starter. That's the trigger of getting things going. So when we've got the trigger, what what's it going to do? We're going to add an action. Okay, we'll say, tell me what the latest weather is. We'll get it to tell me about my commute, and we'll also add an action to turn the TV on so we can watch the breakfast news, assuming sunrise isn't at 3.30 in the morning or whatever. So we'll save that. And now we have a new routine. So lots of flexibility, lots of useful stuff you can do on Google Gemini. So I'm actually rather in favour of it. I think it's a great advance. It's not too intrusive, and but it actually adds a lot to what's going on. So uh, it gets my vote. If this video gets your vote, then please like it, share it, and please subscribe to it. I think next time we'll be looking at Google Gemini. Uh, um, no, we'll be looking at AirDroid to show you how you can demonstrate things on your computer so you can share it with other people so you can help them. Great, okay, well, that's that. So thanks very much. If you like the video, as I say, please like it, please subscribe, please share it. And if there's anything you want me to cover in the future, drop, a drop it into the comments and I'll see what I can do for you. Thanks a lot. Bye.